Mr. Speaker, much of the world today has their attention focused on Gaza, and it seems as if Haiti has been ignored. But when you consider the long and difficult journey of the Haitian people from bondage to freedom and all that has been done to destabilize and punish Haitian independence, I say to you, Haiti cannot be ignored. It would be easy to blame the Haitian people for the overwhelming violence being committed on the streets of Port-au-Prince and Jacques Mel and in the countryside, but such thinking would be the result of a tragic reductionism, more so intended to manipulate the facts than to teach them. Because what is happening in Haiti today is a result of what happened when empires and colonial powers conspire to make it economically impossible for liberated countries to flourish and survive. To think that Haiti had to pay France the equivalent of what would be today $21 billion in 1804 after Dessalines had declared independence. King Charles X of France, a slaver and a colonial power, had the American government after its independence enforce a payment to American bankers, French and German bankers, and put a tax on the Haitian people for 150 years. Haitians did not stop paying. America did not stop paying French bankers until 1947. Yes, a 150 year tax was put on the first freed African group of people to resist slavery and colonialism. How is it even possible to the world would stand by and allow France to put a tax on people of Haiti because they dared to do what Americans had done just 20 years prior to the Haitian Revolution. Can you imagine the outcry in this country if Great Britain had required America to pay a freedom tax after the Revolutionary War to make up for lost wages and profits? Americans would still be angry. Americans would be resentful. But more importantly, Americans would still be recovering from having to dedicate most of its GDP to paying an unconscionable tax for the years. The nation of Haiti was trapped in a vicious cycle of economic extor extortion and exploitation while the rest of the so-called civilized world acted as if making the victim pay the brutalizer was not a crime against humanity and the complete inversion of common sense. But this is what has happened to Haiti. This is the root cause and the base behind the bottomless music of chaos and violence happening in Haiti right now. The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said that violence is the language of the unheard. A point to which I shall add that criminality is the syntax and verbiage of the poor. People who have not the means nor the opportunity to participate and benefit from the wealth of their own country will in the end act against the national interest because the politics of bread are unrelenting. I stand with all of my colleagues who condemn the violence going on in Haiti because the violence is never the answer. But more than that, I will call on all of the Western powers to once and for all take their knees off of the neck of the Haitian economy. The world owes Haitian people an apology and the real support Haiti has never received. America should celebrate our longest and greatest democratic ally in the Western Hemisphere, Haiti. The Haitian army fought with America in the American Revolution in Savannah, Georgia. We can end this violence not with soldiers, but with real economic investment. And if the manifest destiny of America is to be concerned about the quality